This is the Bulls Chat Podcast, and joining me, the head coach, the general manager of the North Iowa Bulls, Todd Sandin. Coach, thanks for being here. Good morning, Joe. Thank you. I think we're going to title this episode of the Bulls Chat Podcast, Solving St. Cloud, because going into last weekend, St. Cloud kind of had North Iowa's number. It was five straight wins for the Norsemen, but after this weekend, you kind of turned the tables back the Bulls' way with a uh, uh, taking two out of three games Friday through Sunday. Uh, your thoughts on the team's performance in uh, in those games, in those wins? Well, certainly St. Cloud had, had given us fits, and, and a, a lot of close games in those stretches of, of the losses that we had against them, but I'm um, very excited that our guys uh, pulled out a win in a crazy game at home on Friday night and then got a good road win on Sunday up there. Yeah, that that game on Friday night was one of the most insane, intense, magical sort of hockey games I've seen. It was a 1-1 game going into the third period. All of a sudden, everybody's scoring goals. Three goals for the Bulls, three goals for St. Cloud. Uh, St. Cloud scores with 45 seconds to play, which... You know, could have let all of the air out of the building and may have for about a second or two. But then 18 seconds later, Logan Dombrowski ties the game up with just like 23 seconds left on the clock. I mean, you talk about a swing of emotions in such a short period of time. What was it like for you, for the team on the bench, going from low to high that quickly? Well, I think uh, as a coach with uh, a lot of experience, I mean, you, you have a little bit of time left on the clock. So you just set up to try to go out there and get one good scoring chance. Unfortunately, uh, it was a bit of a lucky break, too. But, um, you know, Logan got that opportunity and buried it in the back of the net to tie it up. Uh, and then it goes six rounds in the shootout before the uh, Bulls were able to pull ahead there. Tristan Kimmon winning it in the uh, sixth round of the shootout. I don't know how many times I've watched the slow-mo video of uh, him scoring that goal, but it's magical. Yeah. He can rip a puck too. Like it's, uh, you know, at the end of every week we do our little shootout competition, and he's been really good in it lately. Now, uh, Saturday you take the bus trip up to St. Cloud. Was it um, a little bit of a, a, a winner's hangover, um, or, or what happened on Saturday? Especially the kind of the second half of the second period where things kind of got away from the Bulls, and St. Cloud was able to take advantage of three goals there to kind of step in front and stay in front. Yeah, you know, I, I think it was, was a, a bit of a discipline issue. Like, we took penalties that you, you can't give St. Cloud extra opportunities on the power play, and we did that on Saturday. And on Sunday, that's something that we really cleaned up, and our kids were diligent about not um, taking silly penalties and putting them on extra power play opportunities. I, I, I was, like, as far as breaking down the game from Saturday to Sunday, I didn't think we played bad on Saturday. I just didn't think we were disciplined enough. Yeah, Bulls pulled out the three-one win to come back and uh, sandwich a couple of wins uh, against St. Cloud for the weekend. And one of the big names for the Bulls uh, through the weekend and being recognized by the NAHL, Jack Messick. He was the central star of the week. Six points in the three games, uh, a plus five for his time on the ice. Your thoughts on his play and uh, that honor, the third Bull being honored this year as the Star of the Week in the Central. Yeah, no, Jack's been great for us down this down this stretch of trying to claw back into a playoff spot. And certainly he he was very good for us last weekend. But, hey, his, his game and his consistency has been there in the last probably eight weeks. He's, he's been just really a catalyst for us and get back into the playoff hunt. Yeah, and the Bulls are in fourth place right now. Uh, two points out of second, three points out of last. It's crazy. <laughs> this division, obviously, you you follow it as closely as we do. Um, it, it, it's a turn of a weekend on on where you're at in the standings, being in a playoff spot or not. So you really you have to pay attention to every opponent. Uh, now, the next opponent, um, you're on the road taking on Minot. Minot uh, does have a winning record against the Bulls so far this season, 3-1. and one. But it's been nearly five months since uh, the Bulls and the Minotauros have played each other. Uh, your thoughts going into this weekend against Minot, and also I kind of looked at, at at what Minot's been doing in 2023, the you know two and a half months or whatever you want to call it. Here, they've been basically splitting every series that they played, winning one and losing one. Um, your thoughts about going up against Minot? Well, I think when you look at that splitting weekends, it, it, in the Central, it is a formula for success to kind of stay in the hunt of a playoff spot. 
So, I mean, the fact that they're doing that is keeping them close to it or, or you know, just recently we bumped them out of it. Um, but looking at it, like, haven't played them in five months. I mean, it's a totally new pre-scout on them. I mean, they're certainly going to do some of the same things they did the last time we play them, but it's, you're going basically back and pre-scouting them like you're playing them for the first time. Yeah. Well, it'll be exciting, and uh, we'll be watching along as we start the final dozen games of the season for the uh, North Iowa Bulls. 12 games to go until uh, postseason time. Head coach, uh, general manager, Todd Sandin, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Joe. We appreciate the opportunity.